Hey, what's going on, everybody? Moody Phantom here. Guess what? Moody Phantom's horror review. All right, I've got a double feature for you guys this week. We got aliens. I don't know why. I should have do about the slipcase. I hate this blue slipcase. There for a little bit. I must remember like Fox was sending out all these movies with this blue border. I don't know. Aliens. And I got the back of the slipcase. I'm an anal bastard. Even though I'm showing you the Wolfman collection, we're doing were or uh, yeah, Werewolf of London. So, boom. Let's go ahead and let's, let's, let's start with the good one first. We'll start with the good one first. Talk about 1986's Aliens. Sequel to the original Alien. The, the directed by James Cameron. This is basically this is an extension. This is what this is everything a sequel should be. Notes out there, you're trying to make a sequel. This is how you do it. You take an original concept and you build upon it. You maintain the good story and you go with it. You can take it further out. Ripley's been floating in space now. I forget how long she's out there for. I've seen this like a million times and for some reason I keep forgetting 58 years, 68, something like that. Floating out there, deep space, tragically frozen. Her and Jonesy. And uh, Salvage Crew comes out there, they, they find her. They bring her back to life. They you know, revive her or whatever. And uh, she realizes now it's in the future. Uh, now, I'm reviewing, this is the uh, special edition. I'm going to be honest with you. I've only seen the original version, like the theatrical cut of Aliens, once. And it was just recently. Uh, when I was a kid, my uncle had the VHS of this, of the uh, special edition. And this is just the one I've always watched. So I really had no, con I, at the time I didn't know it was a special edition. I didn't know anything about that. It was like, fuck it, it's Aliens. Uh, it wasn't until I watched the theatrical cut that I realized there was so much shit that was not in it. And I, mean, I know, like, you know, it's the theatrical cut, so, I mean, it's technically the original, and you didn't realize anything was missing. But it's when you watch the special edition, you realize, holy shit, uh, you know, James Cameron, he, he's, a, he's a brilliant, he's a genius, he, he just, he, he's a mastermind, uh, great director. Let him do his thing. Don't neuter his fucking work. And this is a good example of, you know, why you don't do that. Because um, I'm not sure, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know exactly what was all in... Like the differences between the uh, theatrical and the uh, special edition. So if you haven't seen the special edition, I urge you to check it out. So if I start saying shit, you're like, wait, but that's not an Aliens. It's in the special edition. Uh, but the one thing I do really, I know they didn't really harp too much on the fact that um, Ripley's daughter, which she had a daughter, and uh, I don't think they mentioned it in the first one at all. But, uh, you know, 50, 60 you know, years go by, her daughter grew old, had no kids of her own, and then died. Really sad moment. Because, I mean, can you imagine, like, you literally just went through a horrifying experience of the first Alien movie. Uh, you survive it. You fucking, you know, you, you make it out, and then, boom. The first thing, you know, you, you wake up, you're like, where's my daughter? And it's like, yeah, she's dead. Uh, really just horrific right there. Uh, thinking of horrific, she also suffers from horrible nightmares. Because, just like in real life, you go through a traumatic experience like that, it will follow you. And, you know, she keeps having these dreams of the chest burster popping out of her own chest. On top of that, <laughs> it can't get any worse, her own company just kind of disowns her. Uh, you know, she blew up a spaceship at the end of part one, and they don't give a fuck about the casualties or the people who claim to have died or whatever. Uh, or not claim to die, but, you know, people that, you know, claim to have been murdered by this, you know, alien species. Uh, they don't give a shit. They're looking at this as, you know, in do like they said, dollars and cents. Uh, that spaceship was very expensive, and this woman who's, you know, was gradually frozen, barely survived, uh, she's put under the microscope, and you know she's telling the story multiple times, and doesn't matter. But, uh, so when she tells the story, though, the guy, the guy that she meets first is a uh, Carter Burke. I love Paul Reiser, and I'll tell you what it was weird. I remember when the first time I watched this actually, though, cause this is probably mid '90s when I watched it, because I was a kid. Uh, was you know mid '90s? So Mad About You, the TV show, has been out for a while at this point. So I always knew it was Paul Buckman. And he's a nice guy, like a nice little filmmaker or whatever. And he's him in this movie, and he's and once again I'm a kid, so you know, you know, as an adult, you can always kind of spot the sleazy, smarmy, fucking, you know, douchebags early on in a, in a movie. Here I did because I was a kid, I didn't know any difference. So I'm like, oh, it's Paul Buckman, he's in an alien movie, cool. This is great, you know. And he's so nice starting off. He turned out to be the world class prick in this movie, <laughs> but uh, uh, so he, you know, he. You know, here's a story. So he sends a survey team because at this point the planet has been colonized. 
And so he sends a team or you know a family in there. Not really. He don't really send a family. He just sends people go out there and just happens to be a family uh, to go check out you know this location that she claims you know the alien came from. Uh, and of course, th- you know all, all uh, you know communication from the planet has been. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna go through the entire story. You guys have seen this. You guys have already seen this. Uh, let me tell you about what I do like about this. And especially, I know that for a fact this is a special edition because I was really like, what the fuck? It wasn't in the original. Uh, there's a scene, a particular scene where uh, you know they're they're holed up in the little communication office or whatever. And of course, at this point, you know they're, they're where are the aliens. The aliens have got them, you know, under siege. And the only thing they have to protect themselves, they got you know a little bit of ammo. But they have these machine guns that are put on these like sensor, like these tripods, and they're sensor activated. And they only got four of them, and they got very limited ammo, and they got them set up on like two different you know hallways or whatever. And there's a scene where the aliens just keep coming, like waves and waves of these fuckers, and they're holding off as much as I can because you know once again these machine guns are doing the work for them, but they get past those machine guns, you know it's fucking game over, and. The whole time, it, it's a very you know intense fucking scene where you know it keeps cutting to them like you know they're just counting down the ammo. You're seeing the ammo run out and shit. And of course, you look on the screen, you can't really see much on the screen, but you just know it's you know fucking war zone out there. And literally, like you know, I want to say three of the guns run out, but one, it's getting down. And you know, at this point, you know Hudson or uh, sorry Hicks, uh, played by uh, Michael Bain. Is that how you pronounce his name? I always want to call him Bean for some reason, but I think it's Bain. Doesn't matter. Uh, Kyle Reese uh, grabs, you know, he's gun. He's ready to go out. And, you know, he has to, you know, resort to fighting. But then, of course, it last second, you know, there's like four bullets left or whatever, and it just it stops. They, they they retreat, and you're like, holy dude, an excellent scene. I remember the first time I watched that, I was just like, holy shit, you know, like you know, I was, I was fucking tense, like, oh my god. And the fact that it wasn't in theatrical cut, it really takes a lot away. Uh, when I watched the theatrical version, like I said I've only seen it once, and it just felt like a very, uh, very edited. And I know, I mean. I, Whatever, but it, it's what it felt like when I watched it. But uh, now this movie right here, it's it's damn near perfect. It literally is. It's a five star film. Uh, for me personally, I do prefer the original better, or the, you know the first movie over this one. But it's not over by much. Like literally, it's one of these numbers. It's one of these numbers. Uh, they're both just great, and especially you watch them back to back. Even though they got two different styles completely, uh, directing styles, writing style. I mean, two different stories, even though they're in the same universe. They're great. The view together. I mean, it's a great uh, double feature. It's a great. It's a great double feature right there. Not the shit I'm doing right now. Uh, but uh, no, damn good. Uh, all the all the actors do great. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Bill Paxton. I absolutely love his character. Now, granted, I've read other people, you know, and seen other people, and they're just like he's just so annoying, and you know, well, I, I like him. I don't know, dude. It's funny as shit because he he's saying what we're thinking out here, you know, and. Uh, of course, you know, he, he's so full of, like, you know, but most of the quotes I say from this movie is all, you know, Hudson's line anyway, you know, game over, man, game over, you know, shit like that, uh, just, it's fucking brilliant, um, overall, I mean, once again, there's no way, and I, I'll challenge you guys on this one, there's no way, if you're watching this video right now, you have not seen Aliens, it, 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 there's just, it's impossible, but for some fucked up reason, you've somehow gone through your life and have never seen Aliens, God damn it! Watch the fucking movie. And it's so good that you don't even need the first one. Like, and I, I, I know I just said I love the first one more, but if you like somehow, I mean, the first one's definitely more. It's a slow burning until it gets to the you know the alien, and then it's just falls to the wall after that. But you know it takes a while to get there, and some people are turned off by that. Uh, whereas this one, I mean, you, you jump right in. I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't really, actually want to jump right in, but it, just, it seems like it's just more. It's more fluid, I guess. I'm trying to say, uh, moves moves along a little more briskly. Uh, Love this whole thing. The final battle scene between the Queen Alien and uh, Ripley inside her, you know, fucking power loader. Awesome. Fucking all. I mean, the, I think the special effects still, I mean, to this day look great. I mean, and I, I think that's another thing, too. If this would have been remade today, uh, sorry, remade today, it'd be CGI. It looked like, it looked like cartoons. It looked like a fucking joke. It looked like Asylum did it. It looked like fucking Sharknado graphics. And I think it looked horrible. Uh, but here, Stan Winston and his team, you know, did an excellent job, and just James Cameron directing in general, I mean, it, just, it pulls it. I mean, once again, I watch it, I mean, I'm a dick when it comes to, like, you know, special effects. I think most people, I think most people are, they don't want to call themselves dicks, but I think most people are very critical, and we can always just spot it. Even if it's decent CGI, you're still like, well, that's still fucking CGI. You can watch Iron Man all day long, it's like, well, that's still, you know, that scene right there is clearly, you know, or whatever. Uh, and here I'm watching it, I mean, I'm watching it that dick eye of mine and it's still like no it looks good like it still looks fucking good um the evolution of the character of Ripley I really love in this one too because 
everybody was like, you know, Alien, or you know, Ripley's been a badass in the Alien series, you know, the whole time. You know, she's just, you know, even the first one, I'll read reviews today where like, oh, the badass Ripley from, you know, first Alien. I'm like, whoa, she was not a badass in the first Alien movie. Uh, she had a killer instinct to survive, and uh, but she did not go badass here, dude. She fucking suits up. She goes down. I mean, she goes down, and once again. Regardless of her reasons, I mean, I think the reasons are great because, you know, it's almost like she becomes like a surrogate mother for Newt. Uh, you know, regardless, of, you know, she's still put in the situation. She still shows that badass, you know, behavior. She goes right there. She, you know, face to face with the queen. Fucking torches the queen's fucking babies in front of her. Like, that's just fucking, that, that's awesome right there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, comes back to fight her in the end. It's just, it's fucking great. Uh, Lance Hankerson is a bishop. I love that character. Uh, the whole fucking knife thing. You know, anytime I did that in school and hurt myself, uh, cause I can never go that fast. I, right now, my invisible knife, I'm cutting my shit up right now. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I can go on all about what else, you know, this movie's great, but just overall review, fucking awesome. Check it out. Boom. That's all I can say. I, I'll keep rambling if I keep going on, so. All right. And now, holding up, uh, Got this box set right here, which I'm not gonna lie, The Wolfman's an okay movie. I'm not like, uh, like most people are. I think it's okay. This box set contains that uh, Wolfman versus Frankenstein, or Frankenstein meets Wolfman, or you know, when Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, uh, which I think is the best in, in this box set right here. This also has a She Wolf of London, which I just couldn't care less about, and then it has uh, the Werewolf of London, and uh, that's what we're reviewing tonight, 1935, and um, I don't know. For some reason, because this is like the one box, like all the other box sets, like they feature their their character. You know, the Dracula box set has Dracula movies, you know, or at least Dracula, you know, their sequels or whatnot. Uh, you know, Frankenstein, same way, you know, uh, and so, I mean, whatever. So when I get the look, man, look at the back of it, I'm like, well, they got two movies from the actual series and then two just you know, loosely uh, related, you know, movies. And, of course, the, you know, Werewolf of London is just, you know, it's loosely related. It's it. The uh, only thing I have in common is the werewolf. Um, so I pop it in, and right off the bat, I'm just kind of like, wow. Uh, looks good. Now, don't wrong, I think all the Universal movies from that era looks great. I mean, for their time. They have a, a nice gothic quality. And even this one, uh, it starts off in Tibet. And uh, I just love the scenery. I thought it looked really good. First thing that threw me off right off the bat, and they never explained it, and I looked it up online, and they didn't say nothing there either, is in the very beginning, it's like him and another guy writing together. It's, it's uh, I forget the dude's name now. Uh, the actor's name's uh, Henry Hole. It's him and this other American dude going through Tibet, looking for a flower. Like, he's just a flower guy. He has a hard on for flowers. Like, I've never been that passionate about anything to where I'm going to, like, go out, I mean, especially flowers. I can imagine, like... Yeah, see this fucking flower, a rare flower that blooms under the moonlight. Who gives a shit? But that's what he's doing. That's his whole uh, thing. So him and this other guy, another guy, another guy, they go out into Tibet, and you know they they, they you know they hear the, the folklore, stay away from you know, to stay on the path. A lot like you know American Wolf one, I guess. You know, that's the clear part they got from. Uh, stay on the path, but they don't. They go off. And um, what happens is at one point, you know, the other guy just like I'm gonna you know stay behind the rest. And the other guy just goes on without him. And then we never see or reference that character again. And as I'm watching, I'm like, what the fuck? What happened to that one guy? I even rewound. I was like, maybe I missed something. No, I didn't miss shit. So I'm like, I watch this kind of late at night, too. And this, is, this may skew it a little bit. This may be like, well, fam, we can't really take your um, review with this much credibility, I guess. I was nodding off during this. And it, I, I, I said late at night. It wasn't that late. It was literally just like, you know, seven-ish. So... Not laying out at all, laying there, and I'm not an author in this thing. It was just so fucking, ugh. Uh, but the first thing I thought, I'm like, where the fuck did that guy go? So I rewind it, and I'm like, no. Literally, two guys go up the mountain. One guy's like, I'm tired, I'm going to sit down for a second. The other guy goes on without him, and we never see the guy sit down again. They never reference him, they never bring him up. And I'm like, you know, because what happens is the guy goes, there's a flower, he goes toward it, and a werewolf attacks him. Werewolves are ridiculous, by the way. Makeup was done by Jack Pierce. Uh, does not look nearly as good as the Wolfman's makeup that Lon Chaney with Don or Lon Chaney Jr. Sorry, with Don, you know, years later. But uh, it, it looked very goofy. I, I, I looked, at, I started laughing. I was like, "Oh wow, this is such a joke." So I don't know if like maybe he got his ass killed, or I don't know. It, it, it's just one. Of the, it's one of the many things that bugs me about this. Um, 
So yeah, the characters are all just very boring and one-dimensional. Uh, and then I, it's hard for me to like not knock the dialogue of the '30s because I mean, it, even if you watch some of the best movies, it just they have like that kind of cheesy quality, at least to me, anyways, when they talk. And this was just like the most ridiculous. Like I don't know, everybody just seemed like they were just like, uh. and um, I, there's a whole like there's a love triangle type thing because. Clearly, Henry Holland, the fact that you know he's a werewolf, you already know he's fucked, because, I mean, especially back in those days, there was no cure. They were, they were fucked. They were, they were done. Uh, werewolf never wins at the end. So, he has this girl, and, of course, you know, him and his girl, they're not really, I mean, they have kind of a boring relationship, and, anyway, she meets her old, you know, boyfriend from the, from back in the day, and, of course, she's smiling now, like, you know, and that, she went from, like, just being, like, you know, kind of, like, oh, I'm happy with you, we're great, to, like, ah, ha, 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 we're laughing and having a great time. I'm like, wow, this is very subtle, and... So anyways, there's that whole debacle right there. Uh, the other thing was, when this guy turns into a werewolf, it's so ridiculous, because like, at one point he changes. Like, he, he goes underneath this... Uh, he's, he, he, he got the plant. Like, he, he got bitten, but somehow he survives, takes the plant. Uh, he, 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 does, you know, he, he shanks the fucking werewolf. Uh, so apparently someone found him, or else he walked back down that mountain either way. Or maybe his friend that we never heard about again finds him and brings him back. Either way... Uh, but he brought the plant with him, so he's got these different little, you know, little plants and things. Well, he simulated moon, uh, like a moonlight beam, uh, to bring this flower, which is you know ridiculous again. But whatever, fuck it. Uh, maybe that does look this. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a smart guy. I'm clearly sitting here in my apartment, you know, living room, running my mouth about movies. So maybe I, you know, it, it, it may be okay. My problem with it was though was it was a scene where he puts his hand in the moon beam, and his hand gets all hairy and shit. And we're getting close to full moon anyways, but. Uh, he goes, oh, you know, he backs it up. But then he goes into it again, and he, like, gets, like, all fucking into it to do something. And I'm like, why are you turning right now? Like, I get it. They had limited effects back then, but still, yet yeah, You just showed the moon being his hand. Hand goes hairy, but then, like, he gets, like, fully in. Like, his face is in the fucking beam, and nothing happens. I'm like, really? Um, the transformation, I will say, it, there's a high spot here. Because, you know, if you saw the transformation on a... Um, the wolf man, you know, it, it's the him sitting still, and then they do a dissolve, and then, you know, it's him with the next layer of makeup, and then a dissolve to the next layer. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not bashing that, because I mean, that's just what they had back then. Uh, and they had that same shot here, too, but the very first time he transforms into a full-blown werewolf, uh, he's walking, and it's just, it's really cool, Ed, because every time he would pass, like, a pillar, clearly they're cut, but then when he go past it, new layer, and... But it happens so quick that it looks really neat, I thought. And I, I liked it a lot more than the Dissolve. Uh, however, it's not enough to say the rest of this movie. Because uh, once he's werewolf, right? You know, they're, typically a werewolf is more beast than man. Here, though, like, he sees, like, his old lady, like, flirting with her ex-boyfriend. And he goes back to his laboratory. And he puts his coat on. I'm not making this up. This is what fucking happened. Puts his hat on and takes a scarf with him. I'm like... What the f- And he gets walking around. Like, he is, like, in disguise. And I'm like, what the fuck? I, I, I do remember, I want to say I read at one point, like, someone did compare it to, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde a bit. And it does kind of, like, you watch that scene, and you're like, really? Because I want to see that movie. Like, it was, like, you know, it's, you know, a werewolf today. You know, like a movie today, you know, huge, hawking, snarling fucking werewolf. But he puts on a coat, a hat, and, you know, his fucking scarf. And goes out just, like, walking around town. No one notices he's a werewolf. Uh, shit like that was just like, oh, this... And I, I, my eyes are all, I'm like, oh, this is fucking... This is a joke. Uh, yeah. It gets, gets, you know, it gets cheesy like that from there on out. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole movie play by play. I will say it was not a fan. I don't recommend it. I, you know, normally I'm like, yeah, I recommend it just to check it out. Uh, I, you know, even if I didn't like, you know, the original Universal type monster movies, like I know I just like, you know, I gave a pretty, you know, unfavorable review for Dracula and whatever. Uh, I still urge people to check them out. I feel like you know you need to see where it came from. But this one, there's no, there's no reason to watch this. If you want to see it, you know, to me, what is considered the original werewolf movie, you watch The Wolfman. Uh, this movie is just a joke. Uh, you know, the, it, it don't take much to kill a, the werewolf in this one. Like you know, they, they clearly, cause I know. The the uh, legend of the werewolf been around for a while, but you know they clearly the movie, especially the Wolfman, they added a lot of the elements to what we you know silver bullets shit like that. But here it's just like you get shot, you're dead. It's like you're fucked. Uh, the other thing was, uh, the other thing was uh, there's a scene at the end where because we gotta make a happy ending. Clearly the girl would probably leave me anyways and go back to her ex boyfriend. But you know Wolfman gets gunned down and he's fucking he's sprawled out. 
still Wolfman, still has the Wolfman makeup, and he's just talking like his last words. He's like, I just want my girlfriend to be happy. And I'm just like, dude, this is the cheesiest fucking thing ever. Uh, and clearly, this, you, know, he, you know, when you think of any of the universal monster characters, uh, someone does not make the cut. And this is 35. Like, Dracula and Frankenstein's already been made. Mummy's already been made. This guy did not make the cut. And there's a reason he didn't make the cut. There's a reason why we forget about the World of London and go straight to the Wolfman. It's because this movie is just shit. Like, I mean, and if you're a fan, I apologize. Uh, more for the fact that you think this is a good movie. But uh, it, it, this is a bad. This is just bad shit right here. Um, don't really care for it. Uh, in fact, there's a, I mean, he's reading the book, too. Like The, the book even says something along the lines of, like, it, it gives you, like, a timetable when the werewolf changes. Like, apparently it's not just when the moonlight comes out. It's, like, between the hours of, like, 9 and 10 is, like, whenever he'll fucking change. I'm like, really? Uh, this shit like that was just, uh, it was just a little ridiculous. Uh, and once again, I mean, it, 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 overall the movie just felt very boring. Uh, I just could not get into it. Um... Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, like I said, I, I definitely poke fun at the uh, original, or not the original, I guess, but the, the Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, but it was definitely a better movie. I mean, overall, definitely a better movie. Uh, the, the World from London, uh, uh, watch American World from London. Definitely a better movie. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say pass. So, sum it up, Aliens, good movie. World from London. All right, guys, that's all I got this week. Uh, catch you next time. Later.